Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing purine salvage. Now, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us. With that being said, let's discuss purine synthesis. Now, we've talked about purine synthesis already in a previous lecture that's dedicated completely to purine synthesis. We had uh, uh, a whole lecture on this. It's only the high yield content, essentially everything you need to know, and um, it's located on our YouTube channel, so definitely go check that out. But purine synthesis, the main goal is to create AMP and GMP. That's essentially what you're trying to do when you're synthesizing purines and it's going to start with a substrate called ribose 5 phosphate. This comes from the HMP shunt, okay? Pretty high yield, don't forget that. This is where it starts from. From there, you have two main steps you need to remember. The first step is creating a, a molecule called PRPP and the second step is creating a molecule called IMP. The rate limiting enzyme thus is going to be glutamine PRPP amidotransferase. Now, this is the very simple uh, format of learning purine synthesis. This is what the pathway looks like. And you need to remember that glutamine PRPP amidotransferase plays a role right here in the process of converting PRPP to IMP. And IMP can then become AMP and GMP. And that's going to go to forming RNA. And then eventually from there, you can form DNA. All right. That's the basic basis of purine synthesis in a very simplified way. When it comes to purines after they have been synthesized and after they have been uh, used up, there are essentially several fates that purines can go through. They can be recycled or they can be removed, right? Those are the two main ways. They need to be either recycled or removed from the body because you can't have them hanging around for too long. Now, if you have excessive recycling or removing happening, it can be excreted as uric acid, right? And excessive amounts of uric acid can thus lead to gout. Now, that's not specific only for purines. That can happen with pyrimidine synthesis and uh, uh, excretion as well. Now, purines, however, are going to be salvaged in uh, several forms, and they're salvaged by recreating the AMP, GMP, and IMP molecules we're talking about. Keep in mind, we added a new purine right here, this hypoxanthine. This does not play a role in the synthesis of DNA or RNA, but it does play a role in the synthesis of IMP and purine salvage, and you need to know that. The key molecule you need to remember that uh, cannot go away, okay, you need to remember this molecule is PRPP. Purine synthesis essentially is going to require PRPP and so is uh, pyrimidine synthesis, but purine salvage, that pathway needs PRPP because without it, you're not going to be able to salvage uh, anything, okay? And this is what PRPP looks like right here. It is essentially a modified ribose sugar um, and that's what's going on. Now, when it comes to salvaging purines, there are several important enzymes you need to know. And keep in mind, in the previous slide, we're talking about the different types of purines. You have uh, adenine, guanine, and hypoxanthine. Well, when it comes to specific enzymes, you're, sorry, specific substrates or specific purines, you're going to have very specific enzymes that are associated with uh, um, salvaging purines. So when, it, when you're talking about hypoxanthine and guanine, you're going to have have an enzyme called hypoxanthine guanine a phosphoribotransferase okay essentially the name gives it away hgprt and then for adenine you have adenine phosphoribosit phosphoribosetransferase. Man, I don't know. My The whole point is you need to remember that you have HGPRT and you have APRT. These two molecules are going to play a huge role in the salvaging of purines, both hypoxanthine, guanine, and adenine. So let's just talk about the pathway very quickly. You're going to start off with PRPP. Like we said earlier, this molecule is very important and you need to remember that it exists and and that it's going to be the basis of salvaging purines, right? From there, you're going to use one of these two molecules that we just discussed, a, uh, APRT or HGPRT, to create adenine, hypoxanthine, or guanine. Now, once you've created adenine and guanine, you can then go ahead and just create AMP, right? You just have to add phosphates, and then you're going to get adenosine monophosphate and guanosine monophosphate, right? But hypoxanthine is then going to become IMP, 
okay? And then once you get to this level, once you get to the IMP uh, uh, process, you can then convert IMP into AMP and GMP, similar to how purine synthesis happens. So once you are in the IMP phase, once you have created IMP, you can go back to normal purine synthesis and you can create AMP and GMP. And then from there or from there on, you can create DATP and DGTP, which are going to go into uh, uh, a, a DNA synthesis. All right. Very important. You can also create uh, GTP and ATP, which are going to be used up in RNA synthesis. Now, what's important about this process is essentially uh, what's happening. So you need to know this pathway. And keep in mind, this is a very simplified, easy way to remember it. Okay, this is very high yield. We're just going to write H Y high yield AF, right? Don't forget the AF part, right? I'm pretty sure you can figure out what that stands for. But this is some very high yield stuff because often you'll be tested on the pathway. They'll ask you if you prevent HGPRT, what are going to be the symptoms, what are going to be the clinical findings, or what are going to be the biologic, uh, biochemical findings. And in that case, you're going to see only AMP being produced because remember, AMP is still going to be produced because you have APRT during the purine salvage pathway, right? You're not going to be able to, to produce GMP whatsoever because not only are you preventing the block, uh, the production of guanine, you're also pre uh, reducing the production of IMP, which cannot create GMP. So these types of things are very important to understand because you can easily be tested on uh, uh, the actual mechanism. But the, another thing you need to remember are the medications. The medications are very important because they often have a clinical correlation and uh, they're going to be tested on. When it comes to purine salvage and purine synthesis, you need to remember there are certain medications that are used to prevent or to, uh, to stop the production of uh, a specific purine. And the one you need to remember in this case is going to be the medication 6-mercaptopurine. This is a chemotherapeutic agent, and it's going to mimic hypoxanthine and guanine. Now, remember, if it's going to mimic hypoxanthine and guanine, it's not going to affect the AGPRT enzyme. It's going to affect HGPRT. PRT, one of the two simple enzymes you need to remember, and really you just need to remember the basis. And once you remember the basis, right, if you remember adenosine or adenine, guanine, and hypoxanthine, you're going to be able to remember the uh, the enzymes. Now, 6-mercaptopurine is going to affect the this enzyme. And the way it works is that it is added to PRPP by HGPRT. And instead of creating the the actual uh, molecule that you want to create, which is going to be either uh, hypoxanthine or GMP, you're going to end up creating a molecule called thioinosinic acid. Thio Inosinic acid is going to inhibit many steps of DNA synthesis. The reason why is you're not going to be able to produce GMP. Okay, that means you are not going to have DGTP production, and that's going to lead to a decrease in DNA. At the same time, you're going to have decrease in hypoxanthine, and that's going to cause a decrease in uh, IMP, which is going to thus cause a further decrease in GMP and a, a uh, lower decrease in uh, uh, AMP. GMP is obviously going to grow or is obviously going to be affected more because you have two main mechanisms or two routes where you're preventing it. It goes back to that example I just gave in the purine salvage pathway where if, what, what happens if you just block HGPRT. At the same time, you're going to downregulate the production of IMP, AMP, and GMP, and that's going to be a double hit when it comes to DNA synthesis. That's why 6 mercaptopurine works so well on DNA synthesis and works as a a, a very well kit chemotherapeutic agent because it's mimicking those bases, okay? Another uh, medication you need to know, and this one's very simple, is azathioprine. This is essentially a precursor to 6-mercaptopurine, and when it gets uh, uh, metabolized, it becomes 6-mercaptopurine, and then it functions the same way. So that is what you need to know for purine salvage. Like I said, this is a very simplified way of remembering purine salvage pathway. It's very, very basic, but it's essentially every 
everything you need to know and if you remember the little tiny uh the pathway we drew out for you and if you remember this slide the medication side those are always high yield and you need to remember that for the rest of your life you're gonna do fine on those questions and with that being said we are done with this lecture thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel we'll see you back we'll see you back here real soon